Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We're on the fifth rung of the peaking ladder, episode five. We're going to transition over to specific macronutrients and variables within peak week. So uh, the step after choosing your carb loading methodology or your macro profile kind of conceptual plan for the week is going to be what to do with those individual macros. And we're going to start with carbs and water as your first set of two variables. Carbs and water, because they go hand in hand, uh, whatever you're doing with carbs, water is going to follow. And we talked about the progressive linear load and different reasons why you might want to play around with a front load or a back load or transition one into the other. But the bottom line, Adam, is that carbs are really the biggest variable of the week controlling how you're going to look. So how do you explain that to clients and what are you looking for in their responses and even in their photos? Yeah, so carbs obviously control water like the Hoover Dam, as I once heard somebody say, and uh, it's very true. So um, that really gives you the framework for, you know, how a client is looking, actually what's happening to the muscle cell. And you can see some really big changes with people with the carb. Now, what people have to understand is the assimilation rate. Are your clients, you know, assimilating those carbs maybe 24 or 48 hours, um, you know, are you seeing the move from two days ago or the move from yesterday? And I think getting a good groove with a client with, you know, kind of understanding how their body works is key. Um, a lot of times if you make a move like the night before a show, you might not necessarily see it the day up. It's just more stability factor than anything at that point. But you know, definitely you have to have the water with the carbs or else the carbs just, they're not even going to transport into the muscle tissue without the water in the first place. So you need that water to even digest them and uh, move them throughout the body. And uh, the yeah. water is what makes you see where the carbs have seeded and, you know, how they're working for you. This, this is why every piece of information you can get as a coach comes into play. As, as I'm thinking through a client of mine who's in the middle of a peak week now, you know, I, I said, okay, here's our normal progressive linear load plan. We had carbohydrates starting at around 250 grams a day over the weekend, then moving up to 275, 300. And as we're getting into the week and doing a little bit more training, I said, even though carbs are going up, you know, I, I anticipate your weight's going to drop and we're going to have to maybe go a little higher. And so sure enough, this morning, after his weight kind of stabilizing at around 210, 211, and, and even with his carbs going up, we just keep seeing his weight stabilize, he dropped down to 206. So a four to five pound drop in one day, even though his carbs have been going up, so clearly he's now using glycogen faster than he's using it. Could be just a fluke. As a coach, I've got to be open to every possibility. But when he sends me those pictures and I can see him being super flat and he says, yes, I urinated all day and all night, I, I know we need to ramp up the carbs. And this is why carbs and water are such a key variable. You've got to look at every single scenario and possibility and variable of information available to you and make sure you're making the right call because you know, it could have gone the opposite. He may have been slowly getting a little bit more carb saturated, could have been getting a little softer, and maybe my plan was a little too aggressive in carbs. So Adam and I will have our plans, but then we're monitoring every day to make sure we don't need to adjust one way or the other. Right. I've always also, too, like I started looking at fasted blood glucose, and, and it's not the end-all, be-all, but I've used that as just another measure as guidance throughout the week, which has been helpful for me. Um, but also too, you've got to think of, like you said, urination, but also um, just uh, number two frequency can be huge. Like someone might drop two or three pounds, but it's really just digestive matter versus them actually losing three pounds of body fat, you know? So that's yep. always huge. And again, guys, carbs and water go together because they, they dictate carbs and, and how your body's processing carbs may dictate that. And, and you may have to adjust water a little bit. We want to keep it as consistent as possible. But if somebody's getting toward the end of the week and you just can't keep them full enough, you may need to increase sodium to actually hold water in as well. So we'll talk about those variables coming up on the next couple episodes. 
But uh, we're going we're gonna to transition now in the next episode over to protein and fat. So we will catch you next time for that episode.